review of the first June like yesterday. And uh, I want you to backtrack because you know the ajza, the 30 juz that we have, these are not from the tradition in the sense they're not from the Quran itself, nor are they from the Prophet of Allah and some of themselves. They were developed later on. So they're not, you can say, inclined towards the themes of the Quran as such. <coughs> one of the juz, one of the ajza, they end in the, or one of the baras as we call it, they end on the first ayah of Sul Hijjah. So, you know, it totally like breaks the topic. But uh, I'm going with the theme of the surahs as, as a whole, but along with <coughs> the juz. Because it was the Muslim tradition to finish the Quran once a month, so there were 30, you could say, groups made. But as far as the theme of the Quran, the Sahaba used to complete the Quran in seven days. It used to be called Ahzab or Manzib. And the Quran does have seven overlining themes which I will go into a little bit later. The first theme is the Sharia, right? Fatiha and then the four Madni Surahs. Now, before the first Jews ends, I talked about the change of the Qibla. Remember yesterday? Before the change of the Qibla, one thing that I forgot to mention that's very important is the mention of Ibrahim. Because on the one side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, you did all these things and you don't deserve to be in the same position as you were before. And then the second angle Allah takes to the same argument is, okay, why don't we look at Ibrahim? Because Ibrahim, everybody agrees with Ibrahim. What did Ibrahim stand for? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very interesting, because Allah brings about, and this is one of the beautiful things about the Qur'an, the Qur'an always brings about the arguments of the others, right? This is just one of many examples within that part of the Qur'an. The Jews, they say the Christians have nothing. And the, the Christians say the Jews have nothing. Even though they're both reading the same book. Right? The Jews and the Christians are basically reading the same book. But they have the same... This, so Allah brings about their arguments. <coughs> you can't enter Jannah except if you're a Jew or a Christian. So Allah responds by saying, Is, was Ibrahim calling himself a Jew? Or was Ibrahim calling himself a Christian? Was this a label that Ibrahim had given himself? And then, of course, you know, making the Kaaba, that was also a big part of this. Now, after the Tahwil al Qibla, after the Qibla changes, now over here, the dialogue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is look, you guys know from your books that this is the truth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts in a very nice way. They know the Prophet like they know their own children. But then after that, the dialogue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes very harsh. <inaudible> Those people who hide the truth over and over again for like about a good, you can say, 20 ayahs almost, this topic. Those who hide the truth. Those who hide the truth. Those who hide the truth. And then they're amongst the people that hide the truth, but they, they, they have sweet tongues. You can say they have sweet tongues. <laughs> there are some people, they have very sweet tongues. You know, you start falling, Muslims, you know, because innocent Muslims who are already inclined towards good, they might fall for their sweet tongues. So be careful, don't fall for, the, uh, fall for their sweet tongues. So this, you can say, itmamul hujja is there in this section of the Surah Al-Baqarah towards the towards the middle, after the Tahweel al-Qibla, that look, you know this is the truth, this is already in your books, Muhammad is already in your books. And you know, just as a side point, I want to mention, Salah, praying with your face on the uh, ground, this is in the Bible. Wudu is in the Bible. Hajj is in the Bible. Sayyam, kutiba alaykum as-sayyam, kama kutiba alayhi ladina min qablikum. Sayyam has been ordained for you like the people before. It's in the Bible. You read the Bible, you find all these things. The Bible says don't eat pork. The Bible said don't take interest. Don't have an interest-based economy. Until the 16th century, Christians were against an interest-based economy. It was in the 16th century that the first fatwa from the Pope came that you could have an interest-based economy. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, Allah was making very clear, look, you know that this is the truth, right? Both from the perspective of what Quran is teaching, that this is the teachings of a prophet, and also from the perspective that you're hiding what your books are saying, and then also, like, you know, there are many versions of the Bible. They know that they don't have the real stuff because the, the council that sits on the version of the Bible decides which b verses are in this Bible and which are not. So anyway, this is a whole different topic. But then, 
from there, Allah gives the first, you can, not, there are two Ya Ayuhal Ladina Amanus have already passed. There are about, I think, 99 Ya Ayuhal Ladina Amanus in the Quran. Two of them already passed. One of them is about having adab or etiquettes in front of the Prophet And the second one is about food, uh, about, uh, about uh, you know, eating good food. But, إِنَّمَا حَرَمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَدَمَ وَلَحْمِ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا حِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ this is the first command in Surah Al-Baqarah. That you have to be careful of what you eat. Again, going back to the Bible, again, I can't go into the details of this, but anyone knows about what St. Paul was writing about the, the whole debate about the foods, the dietary laws of the Jews were thrown away by the Christians specifically. And uh, they were then, uh, they adopted new dietary laws. Uh, anyway, then after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, because now the past has been discussed, and a new, the Qibla has been changed, a new ummah is going to be formed. We have made you the just ummah. You're a community for all of mankind now. Now, this is now very, very important. Ayah 177, which he just started with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with Naysal Birra, the concept of Bir. You see, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ is Salaha Yaslaw means make to something better. Those who bring Iman and rectify themselves. Those who bring Iman and fix themselves, make themselves better. This is the actual meaning of it. Not that they do good deeds. Aminul Salihat means they're in the process of doing actions to purify themselves, make themselves better. But Bir is a person, Abrar is a person who is inclined to do good deeds by nature. He is already inclined towards doing good deeds. He is, he is, he is open to doing good deeds. It's part of his nature. And Bir is a person who is open to doing many, many different types of good deeds. You know, sometimes people get stuck. Like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, really be stuck on, like, for example, helping the environment. Or I'm going to be, you know, my, my father was sick with cancer, so I'm going to open a hospital that has cancer because I want to help people with cancer. Not that type of goodness, but a type of goodness that's broad. Every type of good that you can do, and this should be the idea of every Muslim, that in your lifetime you should try to do every type of good that's mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. You should do at least once every good that's mentioned there. So you can be a person of abrah, a person who's inclined towards doing good, not just one good or two goods, but open to a wide spectrum of doing good, good deeds. And then Allah starts this, this, this ayah 177 known as Ayatul Bir. Laysal Bir wa antu wa lu wujuhakum ibla al mashrati wal maghrib. It is not righteousness that you bir, you know, this idea of bir that you turn towards the east or the left, but then Allah describes it. Then. From there, now the law starts. The law for the believers. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. So uh, this is the second ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, which is about the law of um, the law of isas, the law of murder. Then after that, wasiyah is mentioned. Then after that, all these laws are mentioned. Ramadan is mentioned. Hajj is mentioned. After all these laws are mentioned, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that you have to... Okay, these laws are not there just to be read in the Qur'an. They're not just there just to be read in the Qur'an and just read it. You have to work hard to establish these laws in society. These have to be functional laws in society. So then the, the, there's a whole theme. This is actually from here till the end. There's an interweaving theme in and out, in and out, in and out. With the story of Talut, if you remember I gave that khutbah of Talut. That also is an example of this. But there's an interweaving idea that not only am I giving you the law, but you're going to be tested. And you have to struggle hard. To, and I'm going to see if you're, if you're capable of making these laws part of your life. Not just your individual life, but part of a social life. Part of your social life. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes on, talks about, there's a whole, uh, what he read towards the end was all on qital. Was all on qital. Uh, and then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues on different laws of divorce. Remember I had a whole series on divorce. I think I did four khutbahs on divorce. And those ayahs were read. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now, after Ayatul Kursi, and one ayah before Ayatul Kursi, till the end, all the discussion is basically about economics. Okay? What is the first discussion? Now, how can everyone participate? Okay, Allah gave us laws of divorce. Allah gave us laws of murder. Allah gave us laws of inheritance. Allah gave us laws of Ramadan, for Hajj, for Umrah. All these different laws. Okay, so what do we do? I mean, how does somebody participate? How do I struggle? What is the way everyone will struggle for the cause of Allah? The one way, not everyone can be a teacher, not everyone can be a preacher. How much time do I have? Five minutes. Okay. So, 
Not everyone can, but everyone can participate how? Giving money, giving money, giving money. Those people who give in the past, this the whole theme is mentioned till the subject of riba comes. Again, riba, فَعَذَلُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Why? I want to just, uh, because I have only five minutes, let me just mention something very interesting. Riba is mentioned in opposition to business. قَالُوا إِنَّمَا الْبَيْءُ مِسْلُ الْرِبَى they say riba, interest, is like business. This is what Allah says. To, to give the example that interest is not like business. Because every business has risk. Every business has risk. Riba has no risk. The person who's lending money, he's guaranteed his money. The person who is giving the money, he has the collateral and he's guaranteed his money. And so it creates an upper class that becomes a super class. And I'm not going to go into that right now. But also, when you have debt, you can't spend in the cause of Allah. How can you spend in the cause of Allah if you have a $2 million debt? You're going to be worried about your debt. You're not going to give for the cause. You're not going to go crazy for the cause. And so, I'm not talking about the practical situation of Muslims in the world today. I'm talking about the flow of Quran. I'm talking about what Quran is saying. Quran wants a society that is debt-free. A zero-sum zero debt economy. Anyway, after the issue of Riba, then comes the, the ayat of Dain, the longest ayat of the Quran about contracts. Okay? And contracts, when you, when you, when you ever have, not if it's the daratan, uh, hand to hand, if it is a bargain hand to hand, like you go to Walmart and you buy something to give your, you know, you, you, get, you don't need contracts for that. But if it is not hand to hand, not, it's, you know, time based, it's credit based, then you should have a contract. And now you have to ask yourself this final question, because I'll do Ali Imran tomorrow. You have to ask this question, that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the last two ayahs were, were revealed where? And you know, what is the difference between Ali Imran and uh, Bakra? Ali Imran's uh, emphasis is, is Islam. And the emphasis in Bakra is Iman. Iman and then Islam. And you'll see this contrast, inshallah, tomorrow. Now, the last few ayahs, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُ You know these? These were revealed where? In Mi'raj, right? By the way, these ayahs, over there is وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ In the very beginning, over here is فَانْسُنَّ عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ But over here I want to share with you, why does Allah talk about economics right before the ayahs that are like the peak of Iman in a sense? Right? This is something for you to think about. That economics is our whole society. Right? So the environment we create with consumption and consumerism and economics really affects the whole society. I'm not going to go into details about this, but I just wanted to mention the whole last theme of Bakra is give, 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 give. The whole last theme. Until the ayat about riba and then the ayat of dain, the ayat about debt. And then the last ayahs of the du'as of Surah Al-Baqarah that we went over, inshallah. Uh, one minute still left? Okay. Now you'll notice. He says one minute left. So, uh, so the Ali Imran starts with Alif Lam Mim, just like Bakra starts with Alif Lam Mim. Uh, Ali Imran starts with the beginning, talking about Quran, just like Surah Al Baqarah starts with the beginning and talking about the Al Kitab. This is the Quran, right? Then, okay, so that from here I will start next time, inshallah.